Hey guys, Sick Motion here with the patch 6.8 patch notes. This is, uh, I think the next patch is the big one with all the ridiculously, I think, over, overly changing changes, but there's a lot of changes if, uh, if that is the one. So this one's a lot smaller. The next patch note video is going to be, it's going to be a big thing. Uh, Tarek rework is live. It's here. Um, not going to really talk about it. It's something that you'd probably want to go and check out more than just in a patch note reading. Um, here's a, one of the big changes here. Echo got nerfed. They nerfed his... This is a nerf aimed at tank Echo. They nerfed the percentage of uh, targets missing health from 5% to 3%, keeping in mind that that only does... Um, that don't that execute damage on extra on auto only kicks in when they're under I think 30% health so it was only kicking in on a couple of extra auto attacks anyway and if you're looking at like the purpose of trying to kill an 80 carry I just did the I just did the math for it at the end of the stream it's going to be an extra 22 to 30 ish damage if the people are under like low 2000s health um, when it finally starts kicking in you're only going to be doing an extra like 20 30 ish damage less it's lower than one tick of a sunfire is what that damage was nerfed um it now deals a minimum of 15 damage to minions and monsters which is nice for uh, last hitting uh the passive on hit ratio went up if you have ap so they're trying to be like hey build ap and everyone's like hey it's just so much better to build a tank um and the damage on his e went down uh, 10 at level 1 30 at level 5 so that's still a little bit less damage. They didn't touch the cooldown on it. They didn't touch anything else. They gave it an a more of an AP ratio to make it do net more damage for AP Echo. I played two games on Echo since he got changed. One was started off tank, and then I went a bit of AP, and one of them I started off tank and finished tank. Still felt just as strong going full tank. The one where I went AP, I felt a little more useless. I had way more damage because I had like 350 AP, but I blew up way quicker so that the the extra damage I had didn't matter because I either was dead before I could use the damage or I couldn't get into situations I could have if I was just more durable. So I think Tank Echo is still broken. It's his kit. They could completely remove that percentage health damage off of his uh, W execute and he would still be very strong. It's um, The reason building Tank on him is so strong is because how mobile he is and how sticky he can be while not being able to be killed and then that gigantic stun on his W. Galio... E costs less and moves faster. I think Galio is still in a bad spot. I don't think that changes much. Um, I played Graves a few times since this uh, patch, and he seems a lot weaker with this um, ratio on uh, first hit going f down to 0.7 and uh, 1 total attack damage scaling rather than 0.75 and 1.1 total attack damage scaling. And now crits only shoot uh, 6 bullets instead of uh, 8, but each bullet does uh, 140 damage more or 160 with Infinity Edge. So crit damage Graves might seem like his damage is okay, but non-crit Graves definitely felt a lot less strong. Felt like my damage was not there. Uh, Kog'Maw has more armor and MR shred on his Q at early levels, and the on-hit damage of his W is just lowered across the board. I think he still kind of does what he does well. Uh, cooldown on Yi's ult is up by 10 seconds. Duration is down by seven or by three seconds, down to seven, and the extension on Killer Assist is up to seven seconds. So you're you're more rewarded for getting an extension, but if you're just pressing Alt and expecting it to win you the situation, and you don't get any kills, you're gonna be punished, and the cooldown is longer. Um, so if you get one reset, the total duration is about the same. I think it is the same actually. And then more resets it's better, no resets it's worse. So you can actually maybe feel like you can escape E now if he doesn't get that early kill. Dub Misfortune was changed that her attack speed duration on her W is longer. The cooldown is also longer. It no longer extends the duration by attacking other targets to apply your passive. Um, but the cooldown begins on cast uh, instead of when the buff expires. So the the total cooldown is about the same. And uh, while Strut is on cooldown, applying Love Tap reduces the remaining cooldown by two seconds. So you can still get it back off cooldown by doing the, what you did before. 
but honestly i haven't seen an mf in so long people probably forgot what that even is olaf uh five percent extra life steal on his w at level one which is what you leave it at pretty much for all of the game until you're leveling it as your last level up and then it scales up to be one percent higher than it was before and he gets uh, 10 more armor um and mr when his uh ultimate is off cooldown or um on cooldown basically when it's not active so that's actually a pretty big change because that doubles the um, the passive armor and MR at level six that you have. So basically at level six you just get a free 10 armor and free 10 MR. It's quite a quite a big stat boost um, there to have that. And the sustain is nice. Rumble's flame spitter now does a hundred percent damage to minions instead of fifty percent, and his alt cooldown has been reduced by ten seconds from where they raised it a long long time ago. So lane rumble will still. Feel, I think Valiant Rumble is still going to feel weakish, but a little bit better. That he can actually just kill the minion wave and maybe just go wave for wave trading with some of the t stronger top lane picks that are building Sunfire, Iceborne. Poor, poor Rumble. Used to burn down the wave, now everyone burns down the wave and does it better. A uh, bunch of splash updates, not going to look through all of those. Um, there was a ton of splash updates, though. Here's another big change, um, kind of the Spellblade bonus... Uh, Damage went down from 125% base to 100% base. It's really not going to be... It's the same thing with Echo. This item was never really the problem was the damage it did. The problem was the utility that it gave you in the cooldown reduction, the mana, the extra armor, and the slow on it. So I, I don't see this changing that much. It's a little weaker, but not that much. Uh, Merc skim is now 100 gold less um, total cost, but it lost 100 or lost 10 AD. So that amount of gold for losing 10 AD is not very efficient. When you think a longsword is 350 for 10 AD, you just lost 10 AD for 100. Pretty bad trade. Corrupting potion gives 25 less health per charge, so it's less than a health potion, but 25 more mana. So uh, rather than getting a full uh, 150 mana out of a full potion, you're going to get 225 and you're going to get 75 less health out of the entire potion. To be completely honest, I like this change because I'm building Corrupting on a lot of more durable top laners that don't really have health problems, and they're limited more by their mana, so this will be more helpful for that. Feast during, uh, cooldown is now uh, 5 seconds higher, so it's every 30 seconds instead of every 25. So less lane sustained from that. Secret Stash, instant bonus uh, health and mana are equalized. The health went down 5 mana went up 5 so now it's 15 15 so that in combination with uh, with the, the corrupting potion consumables are looking more to help you with mana and a little less with health this is a pretty big change grasp of the undying lost uh, 0.5% max health when considering that it was 3% before it's it's gonna be I think grasp is still gonna be strong still gonna be very strong based on what I think they had to do to make it feel weaker is you could have left it at 3%, but make it proc maybe after 6 seconds or something. Um, something like that. But I think Grasp is still going to be strong. Just Basically, everything is getting toned down. Like Iceborne's toned down slightly, Grasp toned down slightly, Echo's toned down slightly. So all of those things add up to be more of a significant change than just individually, but I still don't think that's the overall issue. Uh, fixed bug where certain abilities could pop a spell shield and still take effect. Didn't really see any of that. Uh, store visual refresh, new champion select. Fixed the bug where viewing other players' masteries uh, when a new champion select cube pop caused you to lose your own masteries. I've had that happen to me and I went in with no masteries. It was annoying. Spellcasting defaults to quick cast with range indicators. Saved settings are unaffected. Okay, so that doesn't affect me. Bunch of bug fixes here. And then a Diana skin. So like I said, pretty pretty small patch compared to the next one if the next one has all the, those big changes in it. So um, hopefully you found that helpful. Uh, thank you for watching, guys. Um, I said I was going to change the format of these videos in the future. I'm still planning on doing that. I just, I'm having some computer issues right now, so I'm not wanting to um, mess around with learning how to, how to do these videos a bit better before I figure out what's going on with my computer and fix that, because that's kind of where my time's going right now. 
Um, but hopefully in the future. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. If you found it helpful, make sure to drop a like, sub to the channel if you haven't already, go check out the other videos, and um, social media links, stream links, all of those um, informations can be found in the description below the video. And uh, take it easy until next time, guys.